Okay guys, I promised to make a radius cutter to go along with the uh, propane torch that we just set up and it's going to start off with a piece of 5 16 rod, just something you can get in the hardware store. And as you can see, I've already cut a piece off, um, just like 13 inches long and threaded the end with 5 16 threads on it. I've got a few uh, bolts here and a couple of nuts. Um, this one, I ground the head off of it into a point. I got a pair of 5 16 uh, coarse threaded rod couplers, and they had an eighth inch hole in the middle of them. And that was a witness hole, so you could see how far you had your rod threaded into it. I've drilled that out to 5 16 of an inch. I got this uh, shaft collar. When you go into hardware stores, they have all the little drawers with uh, miscellaneous odd parts in it. So that's where I find a lot of these kind of things. Um, there was also this flange bearing. And uh, this collar is three quarters of an inch inside. Uh, this bearing is three quarters of an inch on the outside and five eighths on the inside. And uh, I'm discard this set screw because that's not going to be used. I just used a hacksaw to cut this groove at the bottom of the bearing so it can be retained inside of my uh, collar. But after just a little light sanding on it, it goes in there. And I wanted this to rotate. Then I have this snap ring here that I'm just going to put onto it. tiny snap ring pliers for doing this kind of stuff but anyway that just snaps down goes into that groove and then you still be able to rotate that bearing independent from the collar and you'll notice I got this uh, magnetic base sitting here and I modified that it had a quarter inch hole in it and I drilled that out to a half inch I made this base spacer um, it's the one part I machined. I tried to make everything else uh, so that you could just get it from the hardware store without having to have any real special tools to do it. Instead of uh, machining the shoulder onto it, a person could just take a washer and put it in the hole as a spacer to accomplish the same thing. But what it allows to happen is I can put this in here and put a bolt into it and after I tighten up the bolt It'll still allow this uh, spacer to turn. So I put a washer on one of my bolts and just thread that into there. And then these are pretty much the identical parts, so I just screw one of these onto the base. And then that'll just need to be tightened up, but you can see that this, this is still allowed to swivel. So on the end of the rod that I threaded, I'll put a nut on here, and that'll just be used to uh, jam things tight, and that screws into the set screw hole. And you want to thread that in just enough so that this bearing can still turn without any kind of resistance, and then tighten that nut. I'll take this other coupler with the 5 16 hole drilled in it and that will slide on my rod. And I'm going to call this the, the top. This part of the flange bearing is up. And let's thread one of these uh, bolts in here. And that effectively locks this onto the rod. I'm going to take this pointed part that I made and that will screw into the coupling also. Then pretty much the last part is just to slide the rod into this other coupler here and add this screw to it. And they don't have to be Allen screws. They can these work kind of like thumb screws, so they're they're good for tightening down by hand. But uh, you could use any bolt for that sort of thing. 
Okay, this is the nozzle off of my torch and where the identification information is uh, stamped into it, the embossing process makes the metal rise up a little bit so it creates a problem with fit so I had to take a file and file down that embossing just a little bit only enough to get the burr off that was raised up and now that fits down inside of here and it's it's a reasonable light press fit in there right now so it does not come out easily. This is essentially what everything looks like. Um, these screws here can be locked to hold the rod and then this uh, point by adjusting that down you can see it affects this uh, height of the torch down here so I can set the nozzle to whatever height that I want above the metal. That can be locked with this nut right here to maintain that setting. So about the only thing left to do is attach my torch to this uh, nut like it normally would be and uh, and just set this onto a piece of metal and it will follow the arc that you need to cut. Just set the distance from your nozzle tip to the center of this. That will give you your uh, uh, radius that you're going to cut. And just by loosening that you can set it to any place you want. You can set this out to any place that you want. Okay, just to prepare a cut, I'm going to come in where I want my radius to be. Center punch it with an auto punch. I set up this compass so it's about the radius of the base. All I have to do is position this magnet inside of that circle that I just drew. Okay, then I can just reassemble the nozzle back onto the torch. I just realized I've got an interference between the bottom of the torch body and this uh, screw that I'm using to set the rod length. So I'm going to either need to uh, replace that with a shorter screw or I could take that set screw that I had from the uh, collar and just go ahead and put it down inside there and lock it. And put that down inside here that'll let me lock my radius and uh, does require a tool to get to it but uh, since I'm going to be making a bunch of these that's not really a problem. Okay so now I'll be able to uh, start my torch cut at the edge of the metal here where it will get hot enough to start the kindling process of the steel hit the oxygen and it'll start cutting and uh, all I have to do is push it around in the radius and just kind of keep the speed that's necessary to uh, continue the cut. And this handle can be put into any position so that you can stand clear of any kind of sparks that are being thrown out of the cut. And it works pretty smooth. Okay, we'll get this thing set up and see if it cuts like expected.
So that made a reasonably decent cut along there. I think I need to turn the oxygen up just a little bit on it and it should make some pretty smooth cuts. Okay, I gotta make a bunch of eight inch squares out of this piece of material here. So what I'm gonna do is use this piece of uh, angle as a guide. What I'll do is put a couple of washers underneath of it to space the, the angle up a little bit away from the surface. Using the same collar that we had for the radius cutter, I'm just going to put this short cap screw into the hole here. Just by holding this up against the angle, I can pull this across here and get a pretty decent straight cut. Eventually these will be caps that get welded onto the top of this 8 inch tube, which will be the top of our house piers. <laughs> 